Okay, so bear with me as uh, this is probably take four or five. Uh, it is early in the morning for me, but this is the second in my series on the um, king and the prince of the Heptarchy, the high king and high prince, which is to say Karmara and Hagonel. The first video I talked about Karmara, and now I'm going to talk about Hagonel. So Hagonel is interesting because this name actually appears later on as one of the children of light. And he is said to be the, to rule over, or he, he identifies himself as saying he rules over the sons of light and the sons of sons of light. Now, other, a couple of interesting other tidbits about him is that he's referred to as primus et quartus Hagonel, which means first and fourth. And also that he is called first of the 12. Hmm, okay. Now, zodiacally, you might think first of the 12 is, might mean he is a zodiacal prince, and that may be the case, but he is never listed in the original transmission of that. So, in the first video on Karmara, I mentioned that basically if you take one letter out of each of the archangel names, so this C, A, A, and then this letter R for Gabriel, R for Raphael, and then M for Michael, that you would then get the name Karmara. And you could do the same thing even if you use the heavenly name of Marmara, which he is known as also. By the way, Marmara is also the name of a sea in Turkey, I want to say, or you know, um, you know, adjacent to it, not in it, obviously. Um, so that's interesting, right? Like there's this additional layer of actual referring to things, which is an interesting thing that e Enochian does. It sort of uh, tweaks things that are in, in existence. So, okay, so what do we have here? Well, clearly we have, and you know, if we're looking at seven letters in the name Haganel, clearly we don't have that in terms of what I've circled here, right? I've circled 12 letters, as it turns out. So why, but let's, before we actually get to the derivation, um, but I, and I will get to that, but one of the things I wanted to notice is that this capital H in Haniel, it's actually, it's not the fourth letter, the fourth letter is R, but it is the fourth unique letter. So Z, L, this is another L, so we can say Z, L, skip this one, R, and H. So, okay, that's interesting, and this H is also in the first row. So we have primus, the first row, et quartus, fourth unique letter. So I think that's the reason why um, he is referred to th with that name. So that makes things a little bit easier, right? Okay, one done. Whew. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, well, why have I why have I done this? Well, why have I made this interesting, you know, looking thing? Well, we do. We, I, I will point out a couple of things. First of all, all the letters are represent. All every single archangel is represented using this pattern. So we have Tzavkiel again, and we have Tzadkiel, we have Kamael, you know, we have this, we have one, two, three, Kamael there, Raphael four, we have Haniel, we have Mikael with this H, and we have the letter G in Gabriel. The other nice thing about this pattern is that it gives us uh, a nice, um, you know, symmetry. It's very pleasing to the eye. And another thing that I'll note is that, um, you know, that we don't have, we do have a little bit of higher representation for some of these. Um, Sadkiel in particular, we have three letters. Uh, Safkiel, we have one. Kamel, we have one. Raphael, we have two. Haniel, we have two. And then Mikael and Gabriel each have one. So, okay, well, what's the big deal? <laughs> what? You know, why, why did you put in so many letters? Well, if we count them up, let's just do that right now. We have L, H, A. We have four here, so that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, I've included this cross here for j just to, you know, let the cat out of the bag. He's called first of the 12, and I think he's... It, it, this could refer to one of two things. He is the first in terms of, you know, being awesome. Right, but he's also of the 12 in terms of 12 letters, right? Um, the first is in the first prince, but also of the 12 could just literally be 12 letters, right? 
Now, another thing that I'll point out is that there is no letter O here, but we'll get to that in a second, right? And I'll go ahead and actually write out this uh, Hebrew letter, uh, Vav, basically. So, and I'm not perfect here, you know, I think in Hebrew handwriting, in fact, it's just like that, but, you know, we do have like this, this interesting sort of Vav shape. Um, and I'll just go ahead and write that out here too, in case you're learning Hebrew. V A V or W A W. Okay. So this letter, you know, it's not perfect, okay, but it's it's known as Vav or Wa in Hebrew. And I think in printing, sometimes they just write it out with a straight line. Okay, so so okay, this is all very nice, but get to the point, Cliff. <laughs> okay, so we have the first of the twelve, and we have Primus et Quartus. But now, how am I going to, how am I deriving this name Hagonel when I don't even have the letter O? Well, this, it's, let's just bear with me here for a second. So we have one, two, three letter H's. Why do you have that letter H? We're, sort of phonetically we're getting here, right? You have two letters A, and you have one letter G, and you have the letter U, Hagunil, okay? But... One of the things that the angels did often as just part of their prerogative was they would just, you know, cross out, you know, extra letters. It's pretty well known, right? So this would turn into H-A-G-U-N-E-L. And so that's even, that's pretty obvious, right? So the only thing now that we're... They would just do this, right? We'll get to this cross in a second, but it, this is something that they would do. They would just be like, okay, we get two A's here, but just drop one of them. Okay. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to point out before we get to this letter, well, I'll just talk about the letter U here. So U in uh, Hebrew, uh, it is this letter, and this actually has multiple ways you can pronounce it. Just like, you know, the letter G, we have G for gem, we have G for, like, golf, and we also have a whole bunch of weird spelling rules, like if it's a, if it's a G-H, then maybe it's silent, right? Or it could be the F sound like that, right? Who knows? And it, you, you could go on and on about this. So this letter could, it, sometimes it makes an O sound, O. And sometimes it makes a V sound, um, or sometimes it makes an U uh sound. And to be honest with you, this is just me having a very high level understanding of Hebrew pronunciation. Don't at me in the comments. But so you can see here, if you make an O sound out of, so the letter U, the letter Vav is sometimes transliterated as U, but if you pronounce it as an O instead, or you just take that same archangel, that same angelic prerogative and just change the U to an O, you get that name Haganel. And the, you do need an O for the, um, when you're actually deriving the children of light. But we're still keeping this same name uh, for the purposes of the heptarchy, which is different from the children of light in the sigil of De Ameth. But this, I want to point out that those two things are related. All of Enochian is related to itself, okay? Just bear that in mind, okay? Um, if you're taking the original transmission, every single piece, whether it be the Heptarchy, the Aethers, the Watchtowers, or the um, Holy Table, all of that, or or the, the Seals, all of that, all of it is like this hyper complicated thing that continuously refers to itself, but also uh, directly corresponds to reality. Okay, so I'm not gonna get overly into this, but I did want to mention a thing about uh, uh, the some gematria here. So gematria, I'll just spell it out here in case it's something you need to look up. Uh, it's this interesting system where a uh, letter, equals number, right? So you're basically, well, what does that mean? So basically, for every letter, you substitute it in a number, and you just simply add it up, straight up addition. And then these numbers have significance, right? So if I were to, you know, um, 
let's say, find something, find a word that added up to the letter 31, then I would know automatically, okay, that is also corresponds to the name L. And so therefore, whatever it is that I've just found, it corresponds to L, which means God. So that's generally considered a positive thing. If I have found something that added up to 26, well, I know that that corresponds to uh, the tetragrammaton, the four-letter name, which uh, is also considered very auspicious. And it turns out that if you go about it that way with this, and you're using like these, these actual values, H would correspond to uh, hey, and that's the fifth letter, so you'd give this a five, right? And let's, before we, you know, reduce that, you have five, 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 and then the A is Aleph, I'm not going to try to make the letter Aleph, but that's one, so you have 17, five plus five plus five plus one plus one. Then you have the letter G, which corresponds to Gimel, so you're up to 20, and then the letter U corresponds to Vav, I mentioned that already, the same thing here, the same V. So already in these first seven letters, uh, I'm trying to make, make that mark right here just to show that. First seven letters, you get to 26. So the, no the number seven is extraordinarily important in Enochian. I mean, right here, we have a seven by seven table. It just comes up all the time. In um, Genesis, uh god took the rested on the seventh day and made it holy and it's considered a holy number and interestingly enough if you look at um so the first seven letters what do they add up to they add up to 26 which is you know the name for the holy name of god right yod heh vav -Heh. so then what happens though if we add up the rest of these well you get N, which is 50. And to my knowledge, there's not uh, an ancient Hebrew letter E. Uh, you could probably, there's Y and there's I, which we see here, you know, uh, the letters I. But in Hebrew, this would actually go back to, this would be equivalent to, equivalent to Aleph again. So these would actually be one. So the A and the E, the way it's pronounced as part of these angelic names, those are also one, and then L is uh, 30, right? So then what happens when you add all these up? 26 plus 50 plus 1 plus 1 plus 30, you get 108, okay? Now, interestingly, if you make a pentagon, a regular pentagon, which I will try to do now. Don't laugh at me, I'm doing this freehand. <laughs> Turns out that if you make a, a regular pentagon pentagon each one of these angles these interior angles is 108 degrees and obviously if you've ever made a pentagram you know this idea of five uh elements you know fire earth water and air and then spirit at the top you know that actually is inscribed within a pentagram and if you so at any rate so this is an important number geometrically, and it's also considered largely a holy number. Now, the last thing I wanted to point to was, you know, these are 11 letters, but I've also added the cross here, right? So what would the cross represent? It would represent Christ. So if we are thinking about this in terms of a Christian magical system, which is exactly what Enochian is, uh, then the cross would say, add in three, and then you would get uh, 111. And 111, you know, you, if you've heard of angel numbers, you know, the, the reason for it, the, the idea of a repeating number is kind of important. Symmetrical numbers are important, and this is both. Um, but this actually is not only, you know, if you spell, take the word Aleph and spell it out, it turns out that each of these letters, if you add these values individually, one, 30, etc., then you get, um, and pe, because you don't, there's not actually, you don't pronounce this e, you don't, this isn't spelled out. It's basically uh, uh, Aleph, Lamed, and pe, 
you, you're basically only taking three letters. So the, each of these three letters, if you add them up, they make a three digit number that is just one all over again, suggesting once again, the unity of God, right? And interestingly enough, all, the letter A is, on its own is also equal to one. So even if you spell it out, you're still returning to God, right? You're returning to God, you're just pointed out three times. So this is just a long, complicated way of saying that, um, you know, with a little bit of, you know, inspiration, you know, you can kind of see, okay, here's, you know, here's some interesting patterns here, right? Um, I'm not sure what 82 refers to in Gematria. I suppose I could have looked that up. But the point is, is that you get the seven and you get the four. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, be posting a couple of videos on um, the quote unquote unused uh, letters uh, of the Sigillum de Ameth, the SDA, Bore Oath. Pretty sure it's, that's what it is. And. Um, Interestingly enough, we get this same dichotomy of seven and four, seven letters and four letters. So these are the two names that kind of, long story short, if you derive them, if you, if you look at the unused letters on the circumference of the SDA, then, you know, you, you, and you sort of backtrack to find the earliest possible one, uh, letter, then you can derive these two additional names that were not directly told to Dean Kelly. But I had an extraordinarily uh, powerful scrying experience last night that really emphasized these two. So, and I will get to that uh, later after I post these two videos. Thanks. Bye.